And welcome to the very first YouTube tutorial for the photography enthusiasts. This one's going to be on how the light and blender layer can help you get some more like interesting shots when it comes to stuff like light trails and fireworks. So this is one of the photos I'm going to be using as an example. Um, so you might see like New Year's Eve or even for light trail photos like this, there's just a huge, huge amount of light trails, a huge amount of fireworks and wonder how someone did it. So the easiest way that I know of anyway is with the lighten layers blend mode, the lighten blend mode, sorry. How it works is it sees all the bright areas in the photo and will add them and ignores the darker pixels. Um, I'm probably not doing it any justice by explaining or doing it, <laughs> explaining it very well. So what I'll do is we'll just jump straight in. And I'll show you what I mean by this as a more a better example. So what you want to do is in Photoshop, you would want to open all your layers as a stack. How you do that is you go file scripts and load files into stack and that'll open them all as layers. And then when we look at the actual sort of image here, I have both layers visible. If I hide one of them, we can see what the difference is. So I'll just do it again. So we can see for this bottom layer, we have more light trails here as well as there and everywhere there. The building's a bit different as well as the position of the moon because it was moving. When we turn this one back on, as you can see, we got a little bit there and the building is different. Sorry, different. <laughs> so if I made like a layer mask, so we'll hold down Alt and click on there. And I wanted to sort of add that in myself. If say I go like that, it's going to change that there, which is more hassle. Or if I wanted to add this in here, as you see, it removes stuff as and while adding that bit from that layer, which obviously is not what you want to do. You want to add to it easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that layer mask. And then if we go up to here and we select lighten, as you can see, as soon as I select that, all those aspects come in. So this is from normal, or we just exit out easier. So normal, and then we go lighten. As you can see, it just, everything comes in. But say in the case of stuff like the moon, what you can do is you can, or anything else, you can actually add that layer mask. So say I don't want the sky to be brighter. I don't want the buildings to be brighter. I only want those light trails to come in. So what I'll do is I'll increase my brush size and I'll just paint over that area only. So it's pretty much adding stuff in, but it's not removing the existing things like a wooden layer mask. If I did want to add the building in as well, see, so yeah, I could just go like that. So in the photo that I showed at the start, my photo, this is pretty much after I think about six or seven photos and all my color grading and everything all in one, but that's pretty much what you could do if you add as many photos as you want. Obviously it's gonna take a lot longer time to edit and to shoot, but that's kind of results you can get. And if we wanna look at another example, which would be fireworks. So the three images we have, we'll turn those off. So we got this base one, which to me is a good base one. As you see with the other shot, we had the guy at the front blocking, whereas this doesn't have that. So if we turn on this one, We'll see, we've got someone there, the fireworks are different. And this one, fireworks different, but we have a guy at the front. So I'd say the easiest way is, what you could do is, we'll just hide that one at the top. What we'll do is once again, we'll go lighten. As you can see that fireworks comes in there, lighten. And then we just add a layer mask and then paint over the sky. And there you got those fireworks added in without the guy standing there or anything at the front. And then easiest way, just I'm gonna merge it down. Then I'll make this one visible again. As you can see, got the guys here blocking the view, but that doesn't matter. We just go lighten. So it does get added in. He doesn't actually, it's not really visible regardless. But what we can do is lay a mask again. And there we go. This is just like a very sloppy job, but. <laughs> Is more just to show how the effect works. And after all that, you'll find, um, where are we? You can have a shot like this. So if we go from that, from this, and then I added, I think about four or five fireworks in. Unfortunately, with the Darling Harbor fireworks every Saturday, they're sort of low budget. It's still good having fireworks every week, but they only fire off in the one spot. 
if you had like New Year's Eve and that where they fire them from everywhere, it would look even better because say they had a boat here firing them and there and there, you could pretty much lay them all in so it looks like there's fireworks across the entire frame. So that was just a very short and sweet tutorial on how you can use the light and blend mode to make your long exposures, especially fireworks and light shows, look a little bit more interesting. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe and head over to the photographyenthusiast.com um, to see more tutorials and then listen to my podcast. There will be a link in the notes under below if you do want to go check that out. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.